Guys, I'm really pleased to welcome to the podcast Obi Anuju Ekiocha. Uh, she is a Nigerian woman. She lives in the United Kingdom. She's a biomedical scientist. And she's the founder and president of a group called Culture for Life Africa, which is dedicated to promoting human dignity and pro-life values through research and education and uh, information dissemination. She's also the author of a book called Target Africa, Ideological Neocolonialism in the 21st Century, which I, I want to uh, talk about. Uh, Uju, I, I believe that's what you're called, and I hope it's okay for me to call you that. Well, first of all, I notice you're, you're sitting in a kind of a greenhouse. Uh, tell me a little bit about where you are. Are you in London, or where, where, where are we having this I'm interview outside from? outside of London. I'm in the Midlands, so I'm a little bit south of Birmingham, and I'm just sitting in my house. It does look like a greenhouse, I think, from one side, because my little garden is out this way, uh, but my the rest of my house is this way, So, and I have a lot of plants inside. <laughs> you do? Yeah. But I'm yeah. Home. That is awesome. Well, listen, I've been a fan of yours on social media for a while. I love the stuff that you post on pro-life issues and also a window into how those issues are perceived in Africa and from the African perspective. Let me start by asking you, how did you become involved as a kind of international uh, pro-life activist and activist on behalf of human dignity? Tell me a little bit about your life story. Yeah, just in a nutshell, Dinesh, uh, by the way, thank you for having me on. I'm also a fan of yours and I'm very glad to be here today. So back to your question, uh, about maybe nine years ago or so, I, I was just a scientist working and a journey scientist working in the UK. I had been here for a couple of years, uh, just like yourself. I'm operated from my own country, was raised in Nigeria, but I have now found myself here. Uh, and I really didn't intend to be doing this, but one day I came into contact with some news that uh, Melinda Gates, the wife of Bill Gates, well, the ex-wife of Bill Gates now, she was doing a huge project to raise some funds to bring some kind of population control to Africa at the time she was calling it family planning. And I wrote an open letter to her, which then went viral. And as you know, these days, when something goes viral, you either have to stand in front of the storm uh, and weather it, or, or you disappear after a while. So I decided to, to keep chasing after it and found out that uh, what she was doing is she's actually the face of a, a whole huge movement uh, that was very keen on bringing things like population control and other ideological uh, values that are not very African to Africa. So uh, that's how I got involved. And since then, I've been working along those lines, just trying to talk about Africa with regards to people who are coming with uh, certain ideologies to us. Now, Although a lot of your posting is on the pro-life issue, it seems that what you're getting at is actually something broader, which is to say that African cultures are by and large traditional cultures. They have traditional values. They have a respect for human life. They have a respect for the family. And that what seems to be going on here is a kind of aggressive uh, Western project uh, with America in the lead role of promoting what could be called liberal and permissive values in the rest of the world. Am I correctly summarizing what you are calling the new, let's call it the neo-colonialism of the 21st century? Yeah, I mean, you put it perfectly. I couldn't have put it in any better words, uh, uh, Dinesh, but uh, it is actually what is happening those of us who have lived in the West, um, it, I think it's easier to catch on because it was only when I came to the West that I realized there was even a left and a right. You know, there was liberal values versus conservative values because as you mentioned, where I came from, where I was raised, where uh, I got to do all my education, my university and all of that, we have these traditional values that we take for granted. You know, they believe that human life is sacred and, and precious and worthy of protection, uh, that the family is a father, mother, and children protecting and providing for their children within uh, that context. Faith is important uh, that, uh, you know, the, the community at large is kind of a, a faith loving a, a community in general, right? So we have these values that I took for granted. And so when I came here to the West, to, to the United Kingdom, and then realize, oh my goodness, there are these other ideologies that are in fact 
in a way more prevalent in culture and more forceful uh you know those who are who are who, at least that's this is how i've seen it as an outsider that those who are more progressive and liberal want to push the ideology into all kinds of institutions we we see here in the west and we are living within that system so it came to me as a shock to see that on the international level uh that the Africa had come into to become the target, just as the, as the, the of course the title of my book, Target Africa. So it's just it's the Africa has now become the focus of these people who are so forceful about pushing their ideology into uh, all kinds of uh, areas, including including the continent of Africa. So that's that's exactly what I've observed. I mean, it seems uh, Uju that this is a little bit of an irony because these same progressives say that they respect other cultures, they respect the integrity of other cultures, they don't believe that Western culture is superior to those cultures, and yet at the same time, they are acting as if their liberal values are universal and they do not hesitate to use economic leverage. I mean, this is part of the point of your book to bludgeon, to arm twist these other cultures into going the Western way. Isn't that what they're doing? Using, using their power over these cultures to make them do something that these cultures don't want to do? Well, absolutely. I mean, since, I've, since the last nine years, as I said, after I wrote that letter about Melinda Gates that went viral, I've been going to the United Nations every year. And one of the things I see there, Dinesh, is how superior, you know, how superior a lot of the Western leaders and Western uh, countries come at the, the poorer countries. And it, it's not just African countries. I'm talking about, you know, developing countries in general, developing countries in Latin America, developing countries in, in Southeast Asia, that once the European bloc or the European voting bloc, as they call themselves at the United Nations, once, once they set their mind on something, uh, with the support of the United States, depending on who is in charge, of course, and of course, most of the times Canada is also there, they sit so high above the developing countries. Uh, they present themselves as equals, as partners, and then uh, in the same breath, they are forcing through their views and their own values and, and whenever possible and, and whenever given the opportunity, yes, they do use a, a, a kind of a humanitarian blackmail. A, a friend of mine called it humanitarian blackmail, whereby when they are giving us something or where they're saying they're helping us, uh, at the same time, they are asking in exchange that we lay down our own traditional values and allow their own values to eclipse ours. So we're seeing it everywhere. Uh, and of course, it's, it's beginning to affect policies in various countries, especially on life issues and when, other moral issues. When we come back, I want to explore with you, Uju, how, the, how this actually works. In other words, how it is the case that this... Uh, um, this cultural imperialism is carried out in practice. Uh, we'll be right back. 